And with this community fund, we want to uh, be able to give resources to programs in our community that are doing something to uplift our people. Now, let's say, for instance, if you guys came up with a program, say, um, you know, we want to feed the hungry. And I say the hungry and not the homeless, because you don't necessarily have to be homeless to be hungry. You know, so let's say if you come up with a program like that, the objective of our organization, we want to be able to give you a grant to help you out, you know, so you'll be able to fulfill your goals. So, you know, that's our long-term objective. One of the things that we do every Thursday out in West Philly, uh, we have like an exchange store, it's an outdoor uh, program where people can come and pick up clothes or any sort of merchandise for free. We encourage people to drop off things as well. You know, so if you have something that you're not using, any clothes that you, you know, you're not wearing anymore, you can drop that off, pick something up. And that's a way that we can, you know, out, this our way of outreach to the community, connecting with people in the community. Because one of the things that we do is we don't connect with anyone in our, uh, in our community. We don't know who our neighbors are anymore. You know, it was a lot different uh, when I was coming up and my parents. Uh, so just keep that in mind, like one of the, the main objectives of these classes is to get you guys to talk about, you know, what can we do to make an impact in our community. Now, um, there was a lot of heavy information, and I feel like I don't even want to move on without hearing what you guys have to say about all of that information y'all just received. Did y'all have any comments whatsoever? I did, because I've seen this. And you can, I'm sorry, brother, you can, you know, yeah. if you want to answer anything. <laughs> yeah. It's not so much as questions that I have. I mean, yeah. if anybody does have questions, y'all may ask me. Um, but it, it, it is a lot of stuff that I've seen, like when we were talking about the child program and how I see this with my little cousin. Like, she's only six, but automatically how children are automatically programmed to choose a cookie over an apple, just like that. And it's like, they're learning fast, like like they're getting programmed fast, and it's like, why though? Like like she already doesn't like reading, and that that hurts because it's like you don't even know what reading is like. You know what I'm saying? You just automatically don't, you don't even know how to read, but you already know that you don't <laughs> like it, and you rather watch TV over reading. Well, it's it's it's, it's funny because there was an article that came out and it was called um, Digital Natives. And this was an article in the Education, um, in the education Magazine. And they talk about digital natives. These are the kids that's coming up now, all right? And they're coming up under the, the text and, and the computer and the internet and all of this stuff. So they're used to things coming at them like this, rapidly. So to sit there and read a book, it's boring to them. So the thing is, is that what we have to do is try to combine, combine the two. Because like I said, they're they wrapped. I mean, the video games, all of this stuff, this stuff, this stuff is fine. I mean, I watch y'all on the on the on the, on the phone, the texting, and I'm looking at how fast y'all hands are going and stuff on these phones. Though I'm like, wow. I mean, I can't I can't do that. But this is these are the things that this generation is used to, and they call y'all the what they call the millennials. Yeah. But see, what they also said about the millennials is that more and more, a lot of millennials taking on being atheists where they don't believe in the creator and that's the one big problem that I have because you know it's so important because we all have to answer to our creator when we leave here you know because we're all going to leave here in some way shape or form you know um, whether it's a car accident whether it's heart disease, whatever we're going to leave this earth and we have to you know leave this earth being pleased with how we live our life on this earth so, yeah. so. <laughs> and the program that starts real early, I know you wanted to say something um, as well. But the program is starting early too. If you're not, if you know, a lot of the parents aren't monitoring what their kids are watching or doing, you know, so they're on these video games, they're watching these television programs. And there's a lot of, you know, as we were just seeing, a lot of, you know, programming misdirection going on and advertising. You know, there's billions of dollars being spent on advertisement. Every year, you know, people want to know how, uh, like back in the day, these um, artists would make money off of their CD sales, you know, going on tour. You know, now you can download stuff for free. 
It's like, how are they making their money? You know, Jay-Z can make money from um, this, what's this thing called? Uh, title? Title, yeah. You know, he can make money off of that just by getting millions of dollars from advertising. You know, um, so he doesn't necessarily have to uh, spend money, I mean, I'm sorry, sell CDs anymore. You know, people that the advertising is the program gets you to want to buy certain things and engage in certain activities. So once it, what they do, I saw one thing. It's called the corporation. Uh, it's a documentary called the corporation. And the lady talked about building a relationship with children through the advertising because if they can get you as a child, when you're an adult, they already got your program. You know, so you're already conditioned to see certain things and want to have that. I know you wanted to say something. see what's really what it really is what it really is like hitting for it, in a sense you know what I'm saying and I had another thought but I'm, I don't remember no, go ahead. I, rem I, I don't remember right now but I'm gonna let it come back to me yeah like my generation is like really like internet based right and like a lot of like people say that that like stuff is like bad and it's like messing everybody up but I'm like you could learn anything now the thing is it's like it's like bittersweet like you use it for what you want you know what I mean if you like to be like programmed and watch TV all day, then that's for you. But then again, you can like research every single thing you want online. So it's like a good and a bad to it. Well, let, let me say this, because it's very, very interesting because you brought up a point that, you know, I've discussed in some of my presentations. Um, what's, the, what's the logo for the Apple computer? Forbidden Apple. Forbidden Apple. 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 Right. So it goes back to me. The story of Adam and Eve mm -hmm. and the thing and the forbidden fruit and the tree of knowledge. Mm -hmm. The computer is what we call the tree of knowledge. Because now you can go and look up almost anything you want on this computer. Okay? And it was funny because the first Apple computer was priced at what what you think? Tell me what, what price you think the Apple computer was priced at. The first the very first one that they put out for sale. Thousand. More? Hundred dollars or less? Than More? Or less? It was less, wasn't it? Yep, it was less. Oh. Yeah. Now the key thing is this. <laughs> now watch this. The key thing is, is this. It was six hundred sixty-six dollars and sixty-six cents. <laughs> oh. Wow. Now look it up. Don't take what I say. Look it up. Wow. Now the the thing about this is what we don't under what we don't realize is that a lot of these people in the elite are part of secret society. Of course. Yeah. And they deal with the occult. Yeah. The occult uh, involving numerology and all these types of things. That's why that's why yeah. you gotta study that stuff. Because like if they like if like they know it then like you gotta know it. If like, you're gonna like mm -hmm. face them. Because a lot of people mm -hmm. a lot of people are afraid of the number six six six. Right. Because they don't really know what it means. A lot of people are afraid of a lot of things yeah. because they don't know what it means. Well, yeah. Well yeah. well the thing is is that we're only supposed to fear our creator. Okay, that's 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 the only thing we're supposed to fear. And my thing is, I try more so look at it as, you know, out of love for my creator because I I, I you know recognize that our creator has does so much for us. You know, we wake up with our faculties every day. You don't have to wake up with your sight or your, your sense of you know, any of your senses. You know, so you know a lot of times you know people deal with fear about the creator, but you know. I want to do stuff out of love for for the creator, you know. And a lot of people, I get, like, I, I get this question a lot, and I get it, but a lot of people say, yeah. they be like, well, how can you, they was like, how can you serve a God that 
we have to be scared of and fearful. It's just like your brother and your father. Exactly. I mean, yeah, it's right. just that simple. And people will take it to like the extreme. Yeah, and I'm like, but you do the same thing for your parents. Exactly. Your parents, if they train you up the same way, so does God. So exactly. it's nothing different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And here's a. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I, I like to have you know, these sort of discussions and go back and forth because you know like I'm learning as well like I want you guys to teach me I don't want this to just be one way you know, oh, we want to learn from each other but not you know in the Bible it says the fear of uh, God is the beginning of knowledge but you know look at the you know the fear what why do you fear anything out of ignorance right mm -hmm. So if you're ignorant of something you fear, you know, to overcome that fear, you got to learn about that. So that's why it's the beginning of knowledge, because, it's, you know, that's, that's going to be your journey, your journey to the information that's going, that's, that you're going to need to be able to overcome that fear. Because if, once, you, once you know God, because God is in all of us, you know, not to turn this into, you know, but God, you know, is in all of us. So, you know, knowing God is knowing yourself, and knowing yourself is knowing God, you know. Yeah. But, um, go ahead. <laughs> it's funny that you say that because it's like it's like you're right. supposed to say that in a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, and you, the fact that you say not to get religious, I know what you mean though. It's, yeah, it's yeah. you're not being religious. I just had this talk with somebody, a Jehovah's Witness. Actually, it's crazy. I was Jehovah's Witness till I was up about twelve, mm -hmm. and then then I just started questioning everything. Yeah, and I'm like, like, yeah, yeah. no, nah, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I met one of my old friends from the organization. And I was talking to him, and I was uh, we were talking, and earlier, I forget, I think I think you said it. You said, uh, yeah, the millennials, they they don't believe in a creator anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think like the way I was talking, that's what he was interpreting. I was meaning when I say that I don't believe in religion anymore. There's yeah. a difference between mm -hmm. believing in a creator and yeah. believing in a religion. Religion has, I don't think, religion and they're, they're two separate ent entities. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't have to follow a religion to believe in a creator. Mm -hmm. I'm not That's saying true. I don't believe that somebody clearly created all of this. This didn't just come out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But following a certain religion, I don't have to follow a certain religion to grow closer to God. I don't have to follow these set guidelines of living life. I live life the way I live life. That's the how Bible you get says up. your word is true. So in my world, I make the rules. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I... I I abide by my own truths. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, there are laws of life, like laws of life that we follow. Yeah. Laws of like, you know what I'm saying? Law. It's like a not a trinity, but it's it's laws. Can, of, can I ask a question? Oh, yeah, uh, quick. Real, real quick. Like based based off of. See, this is one thing that I think we need to understand too is that our actions, you know, our behaviors, and everything. It's based off of. It's based off of what, right? What what are, what do you think our actions are based off of? Belief. Beliefs, you know. And, and another way to say beliefs is, you know, we all have theories about the world, the way we see the world. And I'm gonna check. I, I you probably want to touch on on what he said though, because I was gonna switch it up a little. So I'm gonna let you say what you're gonna say. Yeah. The only, yeah. only thing I wanna I wanna say is, be careful in terms of when we say we live by our rules. Be careful with that. And the only reason I'm saying be careful with that is because whether you believe it or not, whether you think it's possible or not, these people have programmed us to believe a certain way. And you gotta be very careful because of the ideas that these people have generated through their various forms of media. So be very careful because think about it. The, the more we step away, the more society has stepped away from God's laws, right? What has happened? Right. The more, right. We are in more chaos. We are in more uh, horrible things going on in the world because we've stepped away from that guidance. And that guidance, that those laws aren't to stop you from having fun or enjoying yourself. No, actually it's a protection for you. Right. Think about it. When you think about the Ten Commandments, just the Ten Commandments, simple as that, right? If you don't lie, people believe you, right? They trust you. If you don't steal, people welcome you into their home, right? Because we live here in communities, right? So we have to have rules that enable us to live in good, functioning communities. 
if you don't fornicate, you're not opening yourself up to disease or unwanted pregnancy, right? If you don't commit adultery, you're not destroying a family. Look at how many families have been destroyed because of the adultery. Right. The parents get divorced. The kids are now doing bad in school. Some of them get on drugs, all kinds of stuff, right? So the thing is, is that we just have to be careful when we talk about living by our own rules because those rules were set there for a purpose, right. you know, so. I, 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 I totally agree. Yeah. That's, not, that's not what I meant, but those are the words that came out. Right. Like it, it wasn't to be interpreted in that way, but right. that was the best way I could explain right. Right. But, what I meant. But, but I, I get what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, I, I understand, I totally, I completely I understand what you're saying because what I want to, sh what I want to show you is I got so much stuff to show you about. <laughs> but what I want to show you is some of the things that's the ideas that are being pushed through this media. There was a guy from the CIA, and he told a friend of his, he said, never watch the television. Television. Right. He said, never watch the television. He said, because it's the greatest indoctrination tool ever devised by man. And it is. And a lot of our, our leaders, our so-called leaders, they don't understand the power of television and what it does and how it shapes our beliefs. And, stuff. and these people, right, subliminal, right. A lot of subliminal stuff is going on and people, they don't, right, it's, right. Yeah, I am kind of the, the like same as when I'm like, once like people get hit, I just start like, because I was a seventh day Adventist for like basically like, most of my life, but like as soon as like QB here, I started like questioning stuff, and then I, I would ask like questions to my like um Seventh Day Adventist some um, family members, like so they're basically like Christians, but they go to church on like Saturday and like they're a bit more strict. But yeah, I start asking the questions, and, like no one could answer my questions. Mm -hmm. So me, that's why I went online, and then I start like researching everything, and then then like once I learned a bit, I'm like, yeah, I can't do this. You know what I mean? But the the only thing that gets me, cause this is weird, cause like a, a bunch of people they think I'm religious. They're like, oh, why do you fast? You aren't you aren't Muslim. Why uh, why do you pray? You aren't Christian. Like religion, it has good things inside it, but I feel like it makes people closed minded. Like it's one way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The the way I see things, you really have to study all these spiritual beliefs and religions. You feel me? Like you have you have to dive into the Quran, the Bible, the like Bad the Bhagavad Gita, the like mm -hmm. the like the like the like book of the dead. You have to really dive into all these things. Because the, the more you, you learn, the more comfortable you'll be. But if you just if you, if you, if you just really say with one thing and then block out everything else, I feel like that's not really helpful. helpful. It's not helpful. You can't be closed minded. You have to be open. I like the word he used though. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I, I just had a quick I like the word he used. He said dive in because you can't just read these books for what they are, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Because a lot of them, it's, it's not It's deeper, it has layers to it, deep, levels to it. You know what I'm saying? You have to interpret it in, in, on a deeper level. And, 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 and it's, it's funny because there was a, there was a guy, he was a, a Indian guy. And he said he went looking for God all over. He went to the mobs, he went to the church. He went to the, uh, the Indian scriptures. He, went, he was, you know, he was dealing with all these different things. And then he finally came back with his answer. And he said, God is one. God is one. And the thing is, is that when we think about it, you know, there's different paths to our creator. We all have a different relationship with our creator. So the thing is, is that whatever is going to get you, that you feel is going to get you to your creator on your journey that way, you can find it. Because a, a Muslim, the term Muslim, and it's funny because when you say Muslim, the, the image that comes to your head is somebody with a hijab on, or somebody with a kufi on, somebody with a throw on. Muslim, the term Muslim means someone who submits their will to the will of God, to the will of the Creator. That's it. So there are Christians that are Muslims. You know, there's Jehovah's Witnesses that are Muslims. People that submit their will or try their best to submit their will to the will of God. And that's what it's about. We have allowed this man. In this system to divide us, racial, Any, anything that they want to do to divide us, they can they can create. If you saw the movie Hotel Rwanda, right? Anybody seen that? Think about how they d divided those people through height, the shape of their noses, their lips, 
okay? So this system is about keeping us disorganized. And that's why I thought that piece with the animal was so important because it showed you once you come together, you can deal with any problem. But those, those animals, were, they, they were scared. It was out of fear that they didn't protect their baby, but they went and they got the, the other animals that they formed the planet came back and did what they needed to do. But it's that unification. We got to come together, black, white, Hispanic, uh, Chinese, whatever, because it's all about righteousness. You know, that's what our creator right. judges is on righteousness, not right. on skin color. Right. And coming together and not let, letting others divide you, because that is what happened throughout our history. So we can come together, but if you let somebody come in, because they're going to send people in. Mm -hmm. You know, the people who want to can, uh, perpetuate your state, and that state is what? A state of seven. When, when we're talking about black people in general in the world, you know, we can look around the world in relation to other groups, Europeans, you know, um, Asians or Chinese or Japanese, when we look at African people or people of African descent in relation to them, you know, where do we fit in that equation? You know, are we on top or are we on an equal playing field as them? Or are we being dominated? I mean, this is a real question, you know, uh, that we need to think about and answer. Like, where do you think, you know, you got, where do you think that we are in relation to other groups in this world? It's like it, it's like the whole scale just flipped. It's like we used to be on the top, and it was just like, yeah. yeah. And even how do you feel it, about it, brother? Uh, um, I feel like uh, the black people as a whole are like in a religion of self searching for our past, trying to mm -hmm. figure out where we are, like in the mental state, and we're rushing around everywhere. Lost. Mm -hmm. Lost. So you, you think you think that has something to do? I mean, we were just watching some clips from. Uh, Goodbye, Uncle Tom, right? Yeah. You think that has something to do with the first? I, I feel like we've been like emasculated as a culture and that that part of us can't be like brought back, but we're still trying to find a new way to understand ourselves and be more into the world and back into our old selves, like how we felt before we found. It's funny, it's funny because there's a biblical verse that says, envy not the oppressor and follow none of his ways. Okay. Envy not the oppressor and follow none of his ways. What do you what do you think that that what, what is that message trying to don't hate the like people who in power but don't do what they do? Basically. Right. Right. Yeah. Don't don't follow the ways of the oppressor because the oppressor only wants to keep you oppressed. And if you think about it, uh, we follow the music that they that they give us, yeah. right? The, the, like I said, the programming, yeah. all of this, the, the the television and music. I'm telling you, it's programming. Yeah, music is big too. It. Music is big. Right, because they yeah, want to yeah, destroy. Music is the universal language, bro. They, yeah. Right, and they and they understand that. And that's what I'm saying. They they have studied these things and studied yeah. how the brain works and all of this stuff for years. So they know what they're doing, and I'm going to show, oh, Lord, I'm going to show you. <laughs> you can't wait. <laughs> I, had, I had something to say. your body in a certain way that it's like you can't even like sometimes you can't control it 
Mm -hmm. yeah. But it makes you feel a certain type of way. Like, it was... It's me that. It's, 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 it's funny that you said that about, about the beat, but remember, the lyrics play a very important yeah. part the because well. there are subliminal things yeah. going on. It goes into your sub Because why you just push yes. my trend and listen to the beat, they slide in the lyrics. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. No, I'm saying, like, it's yeah. like, no, yeah. what I was saying is like, all right, say if like Young Thug, right? Mm. You don't really like Young Thug, but when you listen to his music, that beat, like the work. lyrics, they, <laughs> nowadays you don't even yeah. got to rap. It's just the beat by itself. Yeah. It's just the beat yeah. just yeah. something yeah. controls yeah. it. Yeah. It feels like you it's it's the power. Power. It's it's power. Listen, yeah. listen, if you if you study African uh, tradition, and you know, you know anything about African tradition, they will communicate through the drums. Mm -hmm. The drums. That was a way of communication. They wouldn't even have to say a word. They can have a whole conversation with the next village just by hitting the drums. Mm -hmm. And they already know what's going on. Oh, okay, what's going on? Yeah, you know, so that was it. No text messaging. No, Talking no. drums. <laughs> None of that, you know. They're communicating through the drums. The scene. I thought of four. I sat over here and I thought of four different words that describe, like, what we need to do. Pretty much, we need communication so that we can connect, so that we can coexist in our community. Right. And all four of those words start to see out. I don't really know why, but. Tonight. Wait, you sitting there wrong? I said, connect. communicate. Mm -hmm. We need to communicate so that we can connect, so that we can coexist in our community. Mm -hmm. uh, I like I like that. I like that because that goes back to, you know, like I study uh, social movements. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that uh, the Black Panther Party was good at uh, was, was that. Before they was infiltrated by uh, another CEO, you know, um, Coin and Temporal, which was uh, a program uh, implemented by the FBI, it's the counterintelligence program. And we were just having a conversation about, <laughs> this, about this earlier. Um, but these guys, were had, they had another thing too. They had another thing called the Black Dust. You know, which a lot of people don't talk about. They talk about a counterintelligence program, but the Black Dex was was, um, was basically a group. They were part of the FBI. Where all they did was study black culture. <laughs> so they could sit down. They could tell you your history. White man could tell you your history better than you can. You know, he could tell you about your culture, your music. Mm -hmm. Tell you about jazz, all of that. You know. And you guys, you know, you would sit there and you'd be dumbfounded by the information that this guy, but that's what they do. They study. That's what we have to do if we intend on getting them. out of the condition that we're in. You know, we have to study who it is that's keeping us in this condition. I mean, it starts with us, but we got to know, okay, who we battling with it, you know. And it's, it's them, them same people who, when we were watching um, the clips and Goodbye Uncle Tom, the same people as in power now. We was talking about Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln, how come we don't know the history of Abraham Lincoln? Uh, most of us was told that he freed the slaves, right? I know we don't believe that. But this is uh, uh, something that we were taught. And this goes back to programming. Because the same people who allegedly freed the slaves, um, a group of people who fought you know, during the, during the uh, Civil War, and who was supposed to have helped us doing civil rights is supposed to be on our side, but the, you know, this the same the same institution is controlling our education. So these are the same people who enslaved you and same people you had to fight against, you know, to get certain rights that you were supposed to have when you were free, such as voting, you know, voting rights, be able to uh, you know